if you've ever struggled with custom calendars, like fiscal years that start in July, or even weird retail patterns, you're like, this doesn't even add up. How do I calculate this? And I'm doing all this work. Well, this video is for you. I'm Alice Gonzalez, I'm Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and today we're diving into what I think is a very exciting update in Power BI, and that is the Enhanced DAX Time Intelligence feature. Power BI now has a whole window, a whole interface that lets you define and manage custom calendar structure directly in your model. So that can save you so much time and so much complicated DAX to just have this set so Power BI knows exactly what we're working with when we want to reference our regular date calendar, when we want to reference a fiscal calendar, if we want to reference a different one, we can have those all stored and loaded. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through how to turn on this preview feature. It is still in preview, so you do got to turn it on and build both a Gregorian as well as a fiscal calendar. We're going to talk about what you need to already have in place for your model for this to work, we're going to need to utilize and we'll see how we can then utilize it in our DAX once we have this set up. I am in my report. And if you want to grab this exact one, I'll have this link below. So that way, if you want to play around with it, you can just grab this exactly how it is. Now, in my data model, I already have a date table. And that is one of the prerequisites for using this is you need to have a date table. You need to have all of the time related columns that you want to use in place. And you're just going to be telling Power BI, look at this one, look at this one, look at this one. So we already have to have a date table in place. I feel like, why do I need a date table? Well, that is a tale as old as time here in Power BI. To do time intelligence, and time intelligence is any date related calculation. So if I want to do month to date, year to date, same period last year, any of those time-related calculations, I need to have in my model a specific date table. And that date table will have that date column that starts with your starting date and goes all the way down to the last day that you want to have. And it'll have one instance of every date in between. There are going to be no gaps, no repeats, kind of like a calendar. A lot of people will call their date table a calendar table because of that, that kind of aspect of one instance of every date. Now, for the rest of these columns, right, you can build out as many other columns as you'd like on your date table to account for things like what day of the week number, what day of the week word, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can have the day of the year, the month name, the month number, the quarter, all of those things, right, you can track and they all will go in each row specific, again, off of that date that is being tracked. Now, if you're like, I don't have a date model or a date table in my model, where do you get that? Well, best place, of course, is stored somewhere in your organization where everyone can access it. Here, we have our stored on a SQL server and we can pull it for all of our internal reporting. It is tracking, right? Is it a weekend? Is it a weekday? Is it a holiday? All of that great stuff for us for any internal reporting. Check around. You might have one already set up for you in your org. Now, if you don't feel like I am my org and I don't have one, well, then the next best place is to make that yourself and you can make that in the Power Query Editor. If you do not already have one, Power Query is the place to do it and we have the code for that. I'll have this link below for you as well and we have hundreds of thousands of people use this code to build their date table. You will do this in either Power Query in Excel or Power Query in Power BI, works in both. And you will copy all of this code. Make sure you're starting with that double slash sign and getting rid of any code that is already existing in your advanced editor. And that then lets you pick what day you want it, what your end date is, and voila, few clicks, you got a date table. If you can't do that, you of course can build a date table with DAX in the desktop and using the calendar or calendar auto functions. Once you have that date table in place, the next thing that you want to do is go to your preview sections and turn this feature on. Of course, get your preview features. You're going to go file. We're going to go options and settings and then options. So file in the top left, all the way down to options and settings, and then click on options. Of course, in our preview window, we have our global section, our current file. 
In your global section, that's where you're going to find your preview features. Depending on what month your release is, you are going to see different things here in your preview. This is a preview feature in the September 2025 release. So you need to have at least the September 2025 release to be able to see this preview feature. If I scroll down to the bottom, I can see that I have already enabled it right here, this enhanced DAX time intelligence. If someone is using this feature and they send you a model and you don't have this on, you will get an error. It'll give you a pop-up saying, hey, it's using a custom calendar. You don't have that in here. So you need to make sure you have the preview feature on and anyone that you send a model to that has that will need to see that feature as well. If you make any changes here, of course, when you hit OK, it will prompt you to restart your Power BI so that change will take effect. Now that I have that set up, then now we can go in and go over to our date table, right click on your date table in your data pane. And I can do this in any of my views. I just happen to be in my table view, but I could of course do this up in my report view or even in my model view if I would like. When you right click on your date table, you are going to come down and we have now calendar options. So my friend is where the magic is. Well, let's go through and take a look at these. Now I made two, but I'm going to hit this new calendar option so you can see what that process looks like. And then we'll take a look at the two that I put in play. So first off, when you click on that new calendar option, you give it a name, right? Whatever you name it, this is what you are going to refer to in your DAX. So when you're writing a time intelligence function, say year to date, you say, all right, what am I going to calculate? Maybe my total sales, my total cost, my total whatever it might be, is right the measure as the first part of that calculation. The second part of any time intelligence calculation is saying, hey, where's your date table, right? Point me to that list of dates. Normally, you say, hey, date table, date column. But when you have these set up, you can just reference the name of the calendar that you have created. So if I call this really cool calendar, that's what I get to refer to it as whenever I'm writing my DAX. Then you can see this interface down here is where you are just going to really map what is the category? And then where does that exist in your data? So existing in your data, you need to have any of these categories already added. So you need to mark if you want it to be the month, the quarter, the week, any of those, you need to actually have those columns existing on your date table to be able to utilize this feature. So for example, this one is set for year. So I just say, hey, where is my year? And these are all of the columns that we're seeing behind us right now in that date table. So I can select a year and I can see, there we go. Now we don't have to do associated columns. You see that if you do this feature, it would be essentially if there is a one that you're pointing to that you're like, essentially it's the same thing and we're connecting those in. You don't need to do that, but you can kind of keep going through and any of the other ones that you want to do, let's say date, I'm going to go point to the date column, but again, you could track and you can map up as many of these that you would want to have on your calendar. Once you're done, you always want to validate, make sure that the data types are right, that everything is syncing. That's exactly how it expects to be. We got that check mark. We're good to go. And you could just hit save and close once that is done. And then I can see, right, all of the calendars I have added. So I did a regular Gregorian calendar. I can go edit and we can see I've mapped the year, the month name, I mapped that to the month of year, the date I mapped to the date. Then for my fiscal, I can see I mapped the year to the fiscal year. I mapped the quarter to the fiscal quarter. I mapped the month to the month name, right? The date to the date. So we can pick and have different fields for different calendars. We can also reuse fields too that apply to both. For instance, month name and date applied to both of my calendars and I can use that across multiple ones and it will pull those fields for you. Here comes the fun part. Once you have these calendars created and you can create as many versions as you would like based on all of the wacky ways you might be telling time in your organization, we can now close this and we can write any DAX we want and for those time intelligence DAX functions instead of referencing the date column on our date table, we will now reference our new calendars. Back in my report view, you can see I already have two visuals set up. 
and let's walk through these. I built out two measures. The first measure I can see uses and references the Gregorian calendar. And I could, of course, change this if I wanted to point to my really cool calendar or a different one. I can easily swap this in. Let me back that up for you so you can really see that measure structure. I'm using the total year-to-date function. The way the total year-to-date function is set up is it gives you a count as the year goes through. So you need to have in your visual some sense of time so it understands where am I in time, what year am I on, what day am I on in that year, so it can understand how much whatever we're measuring have we gotten, right? So if I'm looking at total year to date, we can see, right, it evaluates the specified expression over the interval, which begins on the first day of the year, ends on the last date in the specified column. Now, when we have that selected, notice the structure. Using this, before, if you didn't have your calendar, you would have to say, all right, my expression, what am I measuring? My total sales, my profit, my cost, whatever it might be. You point to your dates. Normally, that would be your date column on your date table. Here, We just point to our calendar by name. I also want to point out your calendars aren't stored front facing. They're stored right on the back end. So you're not going to see additional tables getting loaded for them or them showing up visually in any way until you pull up that pane. Previously, if you were doing a fiscal date, you would want to specify that year end. So you'd have to do an extra step to calculate that, uh, that it's a fiscal information by using that year end. Again, that works for fiscal, but when you have some of those funkier calendars, you'd have to get a lot deeper into your DAX. So for us, right, if I want to track my total sales and then the next part is my dates, normally that would be date column, date table. But instead, I'm going to go with my Gregorian calendar right here and close it on up. So I don't have to add anything else. And I can see I have the this one, same measure, but this is using the fiscal calendar instead. So I have the same measure. One is using the fiscal calendar. One is using the Gregorian calendar. And I have those both set up here in visuals where I can see we're going off the same starting point, right? All of our data starts in July of 2005 and runs through the end of 2008. But I can see, right, if I'm tracking my standard calendar, which starts January 1st and goes through December 31st, what that looks like versus if I'm working off of my fiscal calendar, which A lot of times we'll see June, July, some September, right? They're all over the place. You can see that is monitoring and tracking the data on a different basis. Power BI is really just making your time intelligence simpler, more flexible, more powerful, and being able to create those multiple calendars seamlessly in a single model, swap them out really, really easily in your DAX calculation, whether you're working with fiscal years, retail calendars, even like week-based insights, this will give you a lot of precise control over your data's timeline. If you want to go deeper into Power BI, we have got loads of classes over on our on-demand training platform. You can use code Allison40 to get 40% off of that. Or just check out our Power BI playlist here on our YouTube channel. And of course, I would love to hear from you. Are you excited about this update? Are you going to use it? What type of calendar do you use right now? Let me know in the chat. I would love to see when are people's fiscal calendars starting. Let me know. And of course, don't forget, like this video, subscribe to our channel to get more up-to-date Microsoft content right at your fingertips. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.